YouTube username Cycling Mikey, real name Mike Van Erp, has drawn the attention of millions of viewers, establishing a firm base of followers who embody the militant cyclist doctrine. This community ensures the rigid proliferation and enforcement of safety above all else, whilst desperately undermining and delegitimizing any other approach to behavior while driving. Control in the name of safety is what is expressed by Mike in his videos, not safety itself. Control being extended over people from all walks of life, from doctors to directors to lorry drivers. This desperation to control others screeches forth like the echo of a child's attention seeking scream. Demanding the road and everyone on it to bow down and conform with Mike's fragile world full of imminent danger and risk. Superiority over anyone that may challenge this tyrannical behavior is sought as early as possible. Ridiculing. You're awful chicken now, huh? Insulting. So you're a coward then and a bully, right? Surveilling. Threatening. Touch me again, I'll smack you. And dominating members of the public. <laughs> that was hilarious the way you just dropped us. To condescend freely the doctrinal tenets of militant cycling. Very naughty using your phone. Real discussion is to be avoided at all times, as it would require the humility of recognizing that such action could be flawed. Has to go that way, right? Back you go. You're blocking a whole lot of traffic. Which would endanger Mike's power, granted over anyone, anywhere. The power to waste people's time arbitrarily, to obstruct traffic flow, to inflict penalty points on licenses, to have people's money taken from them and have their license, their very ability to travel, removed. It would risk this power becoming visible for what it is, contemptible. Mike hides behind legal statistics and enforcement to justify his poisonous activity, even going so far as to threaten all drivers. The days of driving, how you like without fears of consequence, are long gone. One of Mike's favorite activities is to surveil drivers at a standstill or near standstill on congested roads, invading their private space to ensure they're not up to no good. Such intrusive measures have a catastrophic effect on trust between humans nobody appreciates being watched by their neighbor with suspicion. But this is justifiable in the name of safety for Mike. Once he spots someone on their phone, he will casually invade their privacy further to ensure he can secure a conviction against them, should he decide to report it. Even going so far as to record their phone screens whilst they privately message, still justifiable in the mind of Mike. He will then move himself into view of the driver to initiate a confrontation, after all, Without the joy of exercising his now established upper hand, what's the point? His fellow feeble minded followers swallow this rotten record of childish vigilanteism as another win against the non existent caricature of the motorist. The rot extends into their soul and clogs their eyes and minds with festering parasites, eating away at any possibility of actually thinking about what they have observed. They have observed a car which poses no threat, with a driver posing no threat, have their privacy invaded, be surveilled against their will, have their identifying information broadcast, their emotional suffering ridiculed, <laughs> and then action taken with the goal of inflicting more suffering against them through the leverage of law enforcement. Because I see the logo of your company there. Anything to say to your boss? They even applaud such action. It should be obvious, but to applaud the inflicting of suffering against fellow humans exposes just how decrepit this community really is. And you can't divide the world neatly into perpetrators and victims. And you certainly can't divide the world neatly into perpetrators and victims and then assume that you're only in the victim class and then assume that that gives you certain, like access to certain uh, forms of redress, let's say. It is depressing for anyone to observe this pantomime of sadism and anti-intellectualism with both eyes open and mind thinking. 
Despite the horror of their actions, it is highly unlikely that the toxic cult of militant cyclists will shoulder the burden of reality, as doing so would require the abolition of too many addictive traits and the growth of bravery, respect, and honor. Honor is some scattered lunacy to the safety obsessed, but for some of us, it's all we have to hold our demons at bay. Mike himself will always treat the world as the one which took his father from him when he was 19. I guess as you know, my dad was killed by a drink driver when I was 19. A world full of danger, irresponsible drivers, and intolerable risk. It is sad to see a man past his prime having succumbed to the tragedy of the past, but it is understandable and predictable. It is genuinely believable that Mike has no malicious intent behind his actions, though the actions themselves test the limits of where damaging vigilanteism becomes malicious ruination of arbitrary lives. Blind to this, I hope he may not always be, as the likelihood of a serious violent confrontation increases with his reputation and repeated iterations of inflicting harm upon the public. Self-righteousness, a camera, and a legal shield does not guarantee he will walk away from the repeated confrontations he negligently pursues and escalates. What's that company you're working for there? Seems realistic that Mike will not examine his own actions at the depths required until some serious event transpires. But the neurotic drone and arbitrary attacks will almost certainly continue as he will continually aim towards something that is unattainable whilst leaving a trail of suffering behind him. His anti-intellectual followers will propagate the broken tenets, amplifying and deepening the rift between drivers and cyclists for all road users to suffer through. Through investigating this, it becomes clearer what could be done to resolve these issues. But this is simply a glimpse.